today. My name is Larry Pearson. I'm a Vice President of Impetus Technologies, and I'll be your host and MC for today's session, which is entitled Three Marketing Success Stories for Leveraging Hyper-Personalization. Uh, for those of you who may not know Impetus, uh, the Impetus group of companies are headquartered here in the heart of Silicon Valley, and we specialize on working with large enterprises to assist them in what I like to call all things digital. And in today's world uh, that we lead with uh, uh, analytics, advanced analytics, and also uh, cloud computing. And today we'll be talking about a platform to assist us in this whole area of marketing analytics. Let's take a brief look here at our agenda. It's a simple agenda today. Uh, basically, we're gonna talk about the challenges and keys to success uh, regarding marketing analytics, and then also go through some what I hope you'll find to be very, very insightful and useful case studies from three different Fortune 500 uh, enterprises. Uh, we're opening up a poll here, uh, which you'll see on your screen in a moment, and it's another way we make this interactive. Ask you to respond to this, and we'll come back uh, uh, toward the end of the webinar and share with you the results of this. And the poll question today says, what are your top two marketing analytic opportunity areas? And list their six different typical areas that are no doubt objectives for your marketing analytics uh, initiative. And again, uh, look forward to having your questions. Let me talk about uh, my colleague who is on the, uh, on the webinar today. Saurabh Dutta is a senior solutions uh, architect working uh, at Impetus on our uh, product, which we call Stream Analytics. And Sawdub leads uh, multiple engineering and R&D efforts, was actually one of the early members who helped design and develop Stream Analytics. And I think you'll find brings, brings a nice blend of uh, business uh, acumen and also uh, technical knowledge in helping our clients achieve their objectives uh, in this area. Let me kind of get things kicked off by talking for a minute here about the marketing analytics environment today. It is clearly very challenging, but also extremely important. And the fact is that marketing analytics is at the crosshairs of the revolution, which we now call digital transformation. And it's been most visible really in the impact that it has had on the traditional big box or brick and mortar retail channel with stories like the impact Amazon has had on Barnes and Noble and Borders of the impact Netflix has had on Blockbuster now uh, being almost uh, taking on almost legendary uh, familiarity. But the fact is understanding the customer has always been a fundamental critical success factor of any business. And in today's digital world that becomes challenging, some might say even complicated, uh, but certainly a huge opportunity for all of us who strive to be quote unquote customer centric. And almost every company today, as you survey mission statements and so forth, uh, list that as something that they either feel they are or something that they desire to be. It's given rise to a whole set of best practices and processes around CX or customer experience as each of us as, uh, as providers attempt to create highly memorable and satisfying customer experiences, the ultimate of which is accomplished through personalization or what some might even call hyper-personalization. So the factors that you see on this, uh, on this slide here are what make it uh, very, very challenging. We interact with customers today across a broad range of cross-platform uh, channels that create digital touch points, which are opportunities for gathering intelligence about our customer. In our business, for example, in the B2B technology business, research tells us that 70% of a shopper's work is done before they ever pick up the phone and ask for the vendor to send their uh, sales team in to tell them about their product. So there's a lot of pressure in that space alone, and I think that's representative really of all of our businesses, especially for those of you who made the decision to spend some time with us today on that topic uh, of equal importance to all of you. So the whole challenge of, uh, of, of multi-channel, 360-degree customer view across, across, across platforms from a desktop browser to the myriad range of mobile uh, devices, social media, call center uh, notes and conversations, whether those are sales centers or 
support centers, uh, feedback from email campaigns, uh, loyalty programs have uh, helped us to devise effective loyalty programs and how we might leverage uh, those relationships, and certainly the uh, our ability to do effective web analytics, which will drive and optimize our investments in our SEO programs, our AdWords programs, uh, and so forth. So all of that represents an explosion of data sources, which certainly qualify under this now very familiar and almost passe term of big data analytics, which, of, which involves analyzing both structured, traditional structured data sources, but also an explosion of unstructured data sources, which come to us in the form of uh, voice recordings, video files, text, uh, call center uh, conversations, and even in certain, especially in certain industries, uh, machine-generated or sensor-based IoT sources. So there's a huge uh, availability of information today, and we're going to spend some time uh, walking through three examples of companies that we've helped improve their effectiveness <clears throat> in doing exactly all of this. I would, however, on the right hand, the two right hand categories here also make you aware that while our topic today is very specifically our, our participation in building marketing analytics solutions, the fact is we have as impetus technologies a wide range of capabilities starting from uh, strategy development to various assessments, roadmaps, uh, blueprinting, and so forth, tech, uh, technology stack selection, uh, application development, all the way through to uh, cloud migration and all the way through with uh, post-production and DevOps support are all also services and solutions which we provide in addition to the types of things you'll see today in the topic of marketing analytics using our stream analytics platform. So indeed, this is very challenging uh, and some would say complicated, but I'd like to turn it over to Sordob now who will take us through three great case studies on how we've helped three of our clients uh, achieve some success in this area. Sort of, over to you. Thanks, Larry, for setting this up so nicely. Uh, hello, everyone. Now, we have been effectively able to help multiple Fortune enterprises achieve their goals. And today, I would like to share our experiences on some of the marketing analytics success stories for these customers. And uh, although, we have worked on multiple such use cases, but we have picked three from the lot we found particularly interesting. So uh, I'll begin my first use case from the BFSI sector. My first use case is from a Fortune 50 American multinational financial services corporation. Uh, here we are primarily focusing on their credit card line of business. The idea was to increase the perception of coverage. That is for customers, they wanted to create an impression that the credit cards were very widely accepted across a vast variety of merchants and vendors. And at the same time, also enable new spend activations for the merchants, uh, especially the merchants uh, who are accepting the company's uh, credit card. Now, with this as a background, we built a platform to provide very personalized merchant recommendations to the customers across multiple marketing channels like emails, newsletters, uh, customer account based dashboards, or even a map with very personalized merchant locations, especially in the vicinity. This view that you see in the map uh, is just one of the channels and either based on the search criteria on the very left hand side or based on the location of the customer, you can see that some of the merchants are highlighted. These were the ones which were actually recommended to the customers based on their taste and preferences. Uh, now, very specific offers and discounts are also uh, being pushed to the customers and not necessarily through the, mass or through the map channel, but through some of the other channels like emails or newsletters and uh, when the customer logs into his personal dashboard, uh, offers are also shown based on his interest on, on the dashboard as well. Now, let me give you an idea how we actually achieved this. So, the data was 
pulled from the transactional systems to the data lake and this was almost done in real time using change data capture and once we had all the customer credit card data in the data lake a fine tuned personalized recommendation model was built and here we leveraged various attributes from the customers as well as merchant uh, we used uh, over 500 different features uh, to actually create the model and uh, you know it had uh, all the considerations that were important for creating a very decent model which could then do location based recommendations or campaign recommendations or, or the personalized recommendations that we are talking about now to make sure that uh, the training process was effective uh, we also took care of all the uh, important steps like preparation or data cleansing curation before uh, the data actually went into the model uh, while uh, the training step was uh, being achieved, another important aspect was, you know, you, you can't uh, do the training in one go, right? You have to keep doing this until you reach the final desired outcome levels. So uh, we also took help of hyperparameter optimizations and this was all done on a distributed Spark based system. The modeling algorithm specifically which we used was gradient boosted tree and uh, uh, Finally, we had an effective modeling production environment. We were able to produce real-time predictions within millisecond latency. Uh, another aspect which was again very key and very important which we took care of was the freshness of the model. So what we did was we built a continuous learning model which was uh, self-evolving continuously and based on the latest customer interactions, it was maintaining freshness of the recommendations uh, that were generated based on seasonality or the customer preferences changes uh, that were happening uh, over a period of time. Now with this, we were really able to offer very personalized recommendation across four marketing channels in 14 different markets. Uh, we are able to support an average of 3.5 million, 3 million plus recommendation requests per day for various campaigns and we were handling a peak of uh, 300 transactions per second with an average latency of 250 milliseconds. So with, with this, uh, we were actually able to enable 2 million plus new spend activations in the past year globally resulting from these personalized uh, merchant recommendations provided, by, uh, provided in real time uh, for all the card members. So uh, as a whole, we were uh, able to enhance the customer engagement through this digital engagement and also increase the share of wallet for the credit card. So overall, it was a win-win situation for both the customers and the merchants. Uh, the next use case that I would like to talk about today is about social listening. Again, this was for a very large airline in the US where they wanted to capture customer reviews for both of their domestic and international flights. Uh, additionally, uh, they also were capturing reviews from their competitors and uh, they were able to compare the outcomes of their reviews uh, versus what their competitors were reviewed on various channels. And the user reviews really helped them in targeting improvements and raising the overall satisfaction level of the customer. The reviews now, you know, <clears throat> collection of the reviews was done from various social media platforms and blogs and forums, etc. You could find out reviews in so many places. And obviously the challenge was to automate the entire process of going through each of the review and then derive intelligence out of it. So one important aspect over here was to go deep and understand all the internals of, of every review uh, that was generated. So as you can see on the screen, uh, if, if I just look at the review, uh, when I read the first part of the review, it gives me a different impression versus the second part of the review. So my flight was great, the boarding process was logical and efficient and we left on time. The staff was very helpful and courteous. So, so far the review looks good, but as we progress further, but the seat was very uncomfortable and dated, 
Additionally, the entertainment system had a very poor video quality. So you can see that uh, when the customer is writing a review, they talk about various aspects within a review. And for certain aspects, you might get positive uh, feedback versus for certain aspects, you might get uh, not so good uh, review in, in terms of, you know, uh, their experience. So with this, what we were trying to do was uh, keeping these in mind. We were creating a table of all the reviews and we are identifying all the aspects that were part of this review. And, and the words which were contributing to the positive or negative experience of the customer. And based on uh, the words, uh, we were also calculating the score. So this kind of uh, gave us an idea of, you know, what the customer is actually liking about a product versus, you know, certain things which can be improved. So this had several steps. I, I have just, you know, tried to simplify all the steps over here for our understanding. So first, you know, when we uh, passed all the reviews, we uh, went through each individual word and tried to identify the part of speech of that uh, individual word. So we were getting all the different uh, parts of speech in, in the first step. And then from all of this, we'll just, we were just extracting the nouns. So uh, we were, we had words like my flight staff seat. So whatever nouns we are getting, we are extracting that. And uh, here, what was happening was uh, there were so many nouns uh, that became the part of the pool that you know there were certain irrelevant aspects as well which we wanted to get rid of. So for that, what we did was for all the nouns, we did a market basket analysis. So we we. Got a uh, got a list wherein you know all the correlated uh, nouns got together, and uh, we had this uh, related words kind of a, a, a column that we got, and this gave us a really uh, I would say a subset of the noun set that we got, and these are the ones which we then focused on. So uh, see it's staff audio video you know tea coffee these are related ones, and from that we got a final list of aspects that we had to worry about. Then once we had our aspects, uh, the next uh, two steps, if I talk about, we were associating it initially with the reviews. And then as a part of uh, the next step, we were also identifying which sentence this aspect was a part of. So that, you know, once we identify the sentence, it becomes easier for us to then look at the dependent word. So, so in, in that individual sentence, if uh, along with the aspect which we call uh, also called the governor word, we were looking at a dependent uh, word which was actually defining the aspect. So whether my governor or my aspect flight, whether it was great or uh, my flight was very comfortable or so these are again positive words, but it could have been a negative word as well. So once we have the dependent word, we need to calculate the polarity, how good or how bad the word is. So based on the dependent word, we were kind of, you know, getting the polarity of it. And based on the polarity, we were generating a score. So between minus one and plus one, uh, the closer it is to plus one, the better experience the customer had and similarly vice versa. So in this way, we were actually uh, not just uh, getting the sentiment of the uh, customer as a whole, uh, but we were also uh, getting individual aspects around which the sentiments were calculated. Now, <coughs> I'm sorry, one of the key benefits now was the, uh, the way you know, this algorithm was implemented we could now derive actionable insights from this unstructured textual data, which otherwise would be very difficult. And uh, the monitoring and response also uh, due to the automated process, now it was done very easily. So earlier it was happening in a couple of days versus we brought it down almost in real time. And uh, the most important one is now you could take precise action. So, uh, whatever was coming out, uh, whether it was positive or negative, you exactly knew of the aspect that we are talking about, and then you can go ahead and take specific actions. So this was uh, 
our second use case today and our final use case that i would like to share with you today was again accomplished for a uh, telecom and media giant here uh, in, in this particular enterprise they wanted to generate recommendations and uh, this was not for their customers but for their internal teams to target uh, existing customers and prospects for cross selling and up selling so here uh, our customer had uh, more than 6000 skaus or stock units keeping units as we call it and these all uh, 6000 different skaus were categorized under 12 major product categories uh, which they wanted to generate recommendations on so our major contribution over here was first we were able to integrate a lot of different data sources to collect the data we had data in crm web interactions campaigns uh, you know call center notes and you know there are so many different types of data sources we had we collected data from all these sources and uh, and, and the product information and then we were able to apply a robust unified model to generate recommendation across all the product lines so uh, it was not like you know we did it for the first time but the enterprise was already using an existing algorithm but the problem was uh, that was not a very efficient approach uh, that they took so they were actually uh, what they did was they provisioned 12 different uh, logistic regression models over here and uh, as you know you know logistic regression models produce results uh, like zero or one so uh, what happened was each logistic regression algorithm corresponded to one individual category so uh, whether a product has to be offered or not it was just determined based on a particular category so this in itself was a very poor approach and uh, uh, they were kind of solving the problem independently and they were not getting the benefits of clients preferences and so many different other categories uh, of products which were completely missing and uh, that's where we came in and we created one unified single model uh, which was based out of collaborative filtering and uh, uh, it was taking care of both the product and customer similarity and we created this uh, customer and product matrix and uh, this matrix was then utilized to give us the final recommendation so now if you look at the screen uh, the actual matrix was uh, very huge you can imagine you know uh, if i remember correctly there were more than 6 million customers that we had across 6000 different products uh, which uh, had to be offered so the matrix was a really complex one so here i have just tried to simplify that matrix using you know eight customers and eight products so uh, you 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 create a matrix like this and you can see that you know uh, we had all the customers in one of the axis and products on the other so we can see that you know certain products are uh, you know similar at the same time you know we were also uh, getting in similarities on the customer side of things so here uh, if i just take an i take a hypothetical example customer 1 and customer 5 both are using let's say product 5 and uh, you know there are other factors of uh, also uh, which were considered to uh, get this customer similarity like revenue or industry and all that stuff which i have not mentioned over here but imagine customer one and five are similar and they are already using product one so this gives us a chance of also recommending uh, products to customer one which are now used by customer five because they seem to be similar so here instead of you know randomly uh, pushing certain products to a customer we had certain baseline or certain guideline wherein uh, which we, we could look at and then produce or uh, then recommend a, a, a product to a customer so here uh, what was uh, done was for every product uh, that customer one is not using we calculated a propensity score whether this product should now be offered to that customer or not and then once we had all the propensity scores then we took the top three or the uh, propensity scores which were highest for the top three products and then went on and suggested that now with this as a background now if you look at the right hand side channel for every customer uh, we had 
three SKUs that we intended to now suggest to that customer across all the categories, and uh, we had the top three propensity scores as well. So now this became a, a, a very you know well accepted, and we were really able to impact the conversions uh, having you know this kind of a model in place then. So. Uh, uh, there were various different uh, key benefits that the organization was able to now get from this algorithm. Uh, as I mentioned that, you know, this was these offers were created for all the 6 million different customers they had for 6,000 different uh, SKUs, right? And we replaced the replaced the old uh, old models, uh, or which were, you know, very large in number. So they came with their own maintenance issues and you know they were getting stale and it, they had to be uh, retrained again and again. So instead of working with 12 different models, we had one unified model, and at the same time, we impacted the numbers as well. So uh, after this implementation, uh, we saw a net 5% increase in the new net conversions, and we were able to uh, take the conversion rates from uh, a mere 2% to a whopping 7%. So that was the impact on the conversion rates of, of new customers that we were now able to acquire. And similarly, uh, we are able to get a 6% increase in upgrades. So we took it from 8% to 14%. So here also, uh, we got a very decent uh, uh, jump in the numbers. So uh, with these you know, three use cases, maybe you know, I would also now like to take a moment to take you through the underlying engine that powered all of these use cases. So uh, uh, the, the tool that we used for stream analytics, uh, which is a self-service data flow and analytics platform. So it, this, this, this platform literally has the ability to support any uh, data processing use case that you may have. You can uh, use it for data ingestion, for just doing lifting and shifting. It has a very intuitive graphical interface, which has multiple out of the box connectors and operators that you can use for uh, not just uh, create ingestion pipelines, but also ETL applications, both on uh, stream and batch based processes. Uh, you can also build and operationalize your data science use cases on the same uh, unified platform. Uh, it supports the entire machine learning lifecycle. You can uh, simply, you know, just drag and drop various operators that are available on the canvas and uh, create very, you know, uh, complex algorithms very easily on, on this uh, interface. And uh, this is not just about, you know, building the flows. Once you have the flows, uh, you can take these pipelines to production and uh, you also have the ability to monitor while they're in the production and take corrective actions in, in case something goes wrong. So, you know, it's a very comprehensive platform for all, you know, data-based use cases. And uh, uh, last but not the least, uh, it, it definitely supports all the major cloud vendors and also has an option to uh, be deployed on-prem. Hmm. So uh, that's all I wanted to cover today. I'm sure you also have many interesting problems and challenges and definitely will be happy to collaborate with you in your journey to hyper personalization and all the cutting edge data oriented use cases that you may be trying to solve. Uh, with this, uh, I'll just hand this over to Larry. Sort of thank you for that very interesting uh, walkthrough of those uh, cases. And while this screen is up here, all this slide is up here on the screen, it's interesting to me as I look out at some of what I will call the default strategies that have risen to solve these problems in the absence of having a platform like Stream Analytics available is number one, most companies have implemented a whole wide range of non-integrated point solutions to handle all of these different aspects of marketing analytics that I had mentioned earlier during the introduction. And Stream Analytics gives you an, an opportunity to begin to integrate that to, to pull those out of silos and give people an integrated view across that. And the second default strategy that they have implemented is the rise of shadow IT teams. So there are marketing and large marketing, in many cases, large marketing analyst teams, shadow IT teams uh, in the, the marketing organization. 
that are there because the data is so scattered, so siloed, so non-integrated, having spreadsheets, multiple spreadsheets and so forth, and having to bring all of that together. And a, and a tool like Stream Analytics gives you the opportunity to automate some of that and provide a self-service capability which will uh, be more effective than necessarily shadow IT teams who are crippled by working off only spreadsheets and having to basically be the, the glue to collect all this scattered siloed data into a, a customer 360 degree, integrated customer 360 degree view. So a lot of opportunities presented by this. Uh, this is, however, the time in our webinar when we take a look at the poll results. So if our poll ops folks could uh, display those, there you go. You should be able to see those on your screen now. And you'll recall that the question had to do with what are the top two marketing analytics opportunity areas. And improved customer satisfaction actually for 60% of you was one of those top two. And then there's a tie here between customer retention or churn management and improved cross sell upsell, each having 40% uh, respondents uh, for each of those. So thank you again uh, for your feedback on that. Uh, very, very interesting. And hopefully what you've heard here today will help you to uh, to address those. Uh, what we'd like to do now is, uh, and this, the Q&A channel is still open if you think of some other things that you maybe didn't get a chance to ask and would like to, uh, but we'll turn now to our attention to the uh, question and answer portion. After that, you'll have a feedback uh, survey, which gives you the ability to give us feedback on your user experience today, as well as to comment on things you may have uh, especially liked or things that you would like to have seen improved. And then also you'll have an opportunity to indicate that you would like a deep dive, a customized deep dive discussion of this, uh, this uh, platform that's tailored to your goals, objectives, and circumstances. And we'll be happy to do that. And you'll have a, another poll here at the end here in a minute, which gives you the opportunity to request that. Uh, the first question that I have here says, uh, can you incorporate machine learning and AI in this platform? And sort of if you would uh, comment on that. Sure. Uh, yes, absolutely. Stream analytics, I think, uh, has a very robust support for machine learning and AI. I mean, it is it's completely inbuilt. It can actually take care of the entire machine learning life cycle from data acquisition to training, scoring, uh, managing different versions of the model, drift, and so on. I mean, it, it actually, you know, gives you to all, you can build all types of different machine learning uh, models using different technologies as well. Like, you know, we have support for Python, H2O, Spark ML, and more. So I think uh, we really have tried to simplify uh, how you uh, currently do machine learning. So there definitely are very niche machine learning tools and technologies that are available in the market. But what we are trying to do over here is we are uh, giving one unified platform where uh, people who work on the data and come together, collaborate, and create uh, use cases in a unified fashion. So a short answer is yes, we do have support for extensive machine learning and AI. Great. We've also got someone asking if they can use stream analytics to read data from multiple different feeds and get it integrated into a single location. Yes, uh, uh, this is one of the very basic and I would say a primary use case for stream analytics. Uh, we can very easily achieve data movement from multiple different sources and targets. So uh, again, you know, we have a visual designer uh, which has all these connectors available for you. You can just drag and drop and start building your uh, pipelines as we call them. And uh, not just, you know, through pipelines in, in stream analytics, we also have a concept called as applications. So here, uh, when, when you launch a stream analytics application, it is again a very easy and intuitive wizard based, uh, uh, I would say, UI, which will handhold you and you will just go through that wizard and in the back end, all the pipelines will be automatically created. 
so yeah, I think it is very, uh, very, very easy and convenient to read from these multiple feeds and get the data into one single location. Excellent. So we've got one attendee that would like to know if the collaborative fil filtering model takes care of upsell. If there's an application for that here in the upsell use case. Yeah. So uh, this is an interesting one. We, it's it's not directly for upsell, but if, if you remember during the talk I mentioned, right? So collaborative filtering is used for recommendations. So now uh, when you have to recommend something to someone, uh, there is where the importance of collaborative filtering is. And here we were recommending to our internal teams that, you know, hey, what are the products which now you have to upsell, which, which are the products now you have to suggest to your customers. So that's where we were using it as a recommendation system. But again, uh, you know, it, it's not a straightforward model for upselling. We were using it, it for recommendation and the recommendation was specifically for upselling. Okay, great, interesting. Uh, there's another question is, how much time does it take for data to be available for querying? Now, uh, this really depends on how you have created the pipeline and what are the data sources you are reading data from. So we have support for both batch and streaming sources. So for streaming sources, the data is, uh, available almost in the real time. While if we now talk about the batch sources, it depends on how you have configured or scheduled the system and what intervals your feeds are coming and in what interval you would like to collectively uh, process all the feeds that are coming together. So it is uh, almost dependent on how you want to configure the system for, for batch based sources. You can configure it to run in, in 30 minutes, you can configure it to run uh, daily, it really depends. But as I said, for real-time uh, sources, data is almost available in the real-time. Excellent. So there's another attendee asking, can the product integrate data from old as well as latest, the latest data sources at the same time? Uh, by I, by old, I, I would assume that by old you mean the static data sources and uh, the latest data sources, uh, by that I'm assuming you mean the streaming data sources, I believe. Uh, uh, in this case, the answer is definitely yes. Uh, you can definitely combine all different types of data sources. Uh, and uh, I, I mean, this is pretty easy. I mean, you can definitely do it. You can integrate it both these sources uh, and you can, you know, configure it to run again, as I mentioned in my previous answer as well in a specific interval and data will be joined together and you can, again, you know, on your real-time stream, you could, again, integrate to the static source for the purpose of enriching as well. I mean, there are, again, different use cases, but uh, definitely it is possible as well. Okay, excellent. Well, that concludes uh, the questions that came in. You'll see on the screen uh, how to contact us for additional follow-up inquiry at streamanalytics.com. I would remind you that we also have a number of other practices with regard to if you have any initiatives for modernizing your data warehouses, we have a practice that addresses that. Implementing a modern data architecture that has the capability to handle both structured and unstructured data the way we discuss them today. And a cloud migration practice for those of you who are considering um, or in the process of migrating to the cloud. You can actually use this same inquiry at streamanalytics.com to reach out to us uh, for any of those. Uh, on the screen, you'll also see the final poll. And the final poll says, would you be interested in a deep dive, uh, a deep dive presentation on uh, the platform that you saw today? You have the ability there to uh, request that and we'll follow up with you. And as I say, the benefit of that is that we have the ability to tailor it very, very specifically to what your specific uh, challenges, platforms, history, and so forth are. Uh, and those are always highly productive. It's a workshop, a tailored workshop, kind of an environment that gives you more of a deep dive. Lastly, we would ask you to rate your webinar experience from one to five, with five being the highest, and offer also any comments or feedback you may have. And with that, that concludes our webinar today, and I wish you all a wonderful uh, balance of your day and a great weekend. Thank you so much for attending.